investigates has exclusive surveillance video showing a convicted murderer brutally attacking a St. Louis grandmother. Investigator Susan Alcori discovered the video is only part of the story. She digs into the crime spree kept in the dark until now. And just a warning, some of the video may be upsetting to watch. He should not have ever been on the street. He's an animal. He kicked her, stumped her, oh. beat her, took her head and hit it against the ground. It's just horrible. It's hard for Sheila to imagine, let alone see her 70 year old sister being attacked. My sister will never be the same at all. She she just won't. The chaos didn't stop there as shoppers at the Central West End Strop got more than they bargained for. I felt like they was trying to downplay everything. At the center is John. They tried to downplay it. <laughs> he curb stopped a 70 year old woman and they tried to downplay it. And you got some people talking about the media is against us, man. I come out, man. I got a show early in the morning, man. Nice to meet y'all. All right. All right, peace All right. out, bro. Yeah. Take it easy, man. Salute right. to you, man. Thanks. But the Central West End Strop got more than they bargained for. I felt like they was trying to downplay everything. At the center is John White Jr., a 59-year-old convicted murderer allowed back on the streets. Why was he let loose? I'm not understanding that. You demanded to it, time out. If this is a mammy. This woman right here, she's a 60-something-year-old 60, 60 black woman. There is not one of them except for Diamond and Silk that are conservative. Those are the only two. That age group? Yeah. She told me also how I wonder how this happened. Like they was trying to downplay everything. At the center is John White Jr., a 59-year-old convicted murderer allowed back on the streets. Why was he let loose? I'm not understanding that. Rewind to a few days earlier. In North St. Louis's College Hill neighborhood, White had a run-in with police and ended up in jail. All kept quiet until now. News 4 Investigates just got a copy of the police report detailing what happened. On February 19th, police say White was speeding, hit a parked car, and did not stop until crashing into these city flower planters. According to the report, police found him sitting on the sidewalk with a large bottle of liquor. Police claim White told EMTs he had cocaine in his system, and officers found what they suspected to be crack cocaine along with a glass pipe. White went to the hospital where police say he poked an officer in the face and inappropriately touched a nurse. Police booked White God on multiple charges. What the fuck? Yo, you just the reason why this it. isn't the reason why this isn't national news is because the glider wasn't there to put him in a chokehold to save that woman and he didn't end up dying. Right. I'm telling you, man. Listen, man, the stuff we get away with. That's what I say. Like, our crime is so much more interesting because like, it's just so much crime. Like, it's not just he curb stomped a 70 year old woman. He ran into the fucking stanchion, pulled over, cold the cops. He had okay, poked on the cops, felt on the nurse's butt. It's like, it's where, yo, the fact that with the narrative, the mainstream narrative is what it is. Amazing, man. Charges, including driving while intoxicated and two counts of fourth degree assault, which are misdemeanors. But White wasn't charged, meaning he got to leave jail. When you learned that, what were you thinking? Wow. They let him go. He shouldn't have never been on the streets. Some of this comes down to how arrest warrants are handled in the city. Police used to be able to take a case and walk into the courthouse where the circuit attorney's office would decide if there's enough for an arrest. But COVID stopped that, and now all cases are emailed to an inbox that keeps on growing. I don't know what people have to do to get arrested in this town, but if punching police officers and groping nurses isn't it, it's a free-for-all in the city of St. Louis, and it's outrageous. Attorney Scott Sherman represents Sheila's sister. He's questioning how police and prosecutors handle cases known as pending application of warrant or PAW. These are cases police investigated, found evidence, then sent to prosecutors. Police say the latest count is 3,877 cases, all sitting in an email inbox waiting on prosecutors to. <laughs> That's one city.
and this is all these sun men on the street so that means unless they've been rearrested for something else like murder where you they're gonna you know they're on the streets to make a decision it sends a message to the criminals and the would-be criminals out there hey it's a free-for-all police say they can't keep everyone in jail so some like white are released yeah asked- but here's my thing just because it's a free-for-all if that means you curb stop 70 year old women random 70 year old women in public places at grocery stores that's a sick community where the free for all don't mean like all right we just gonna steal or you know what i'm saying oh yeah we gonna you know what i mean we gonna or they they, they took the yeah. you know what i'm saying the free for all mean now we get the curb stomp 70 year old women right that's what happened in his case a department spokesperson said it was added to the paw list while we await the missouri highway patrol lab results white's accused of a dwi and it's common to have a blood test sent to the state lab if those two acts alone assaults against a police officer and a nurse trying to help him aren't enough to get this guy locked up and charged i don't know what would The police report doesn't mention White's murder conviction in a nearly two decades old case dating back to 1999. News 4 investigates uncovered court records showing White pled guilty, admitting he shot into a St. Louis County home, killing Yvonne Gates, a nine year old girl playing in. This shit been going on. This fool shot into a home in 1999 and killed a nine-year-old girl that was playing inside. In 1999. Zero remorse. To get this guy locked up and charged? I don't know what would. The police report doesn't mention White's murder conviction in a nearly two decades old case dating back to 1999. News 4 investigates uncovered court records showing White pled guilty, admitting he shot into a St. Louis County home, killing Yvonne Gates, a nine-year-old girl playing inside. White was sentenced to 25 years in prison. He served 21. According to the Missouri Department of Corrections, he was paroled. I bet you some goddamn white liberal innocence project motherfuckers came in there and got his ass out. I mean, I wasn't wasn't that eighty five percent? Yeah, that's true. That's eighty five. That's true. Serve twenty one, according to the Missouri Department of Corrections, he was paroled in August twenty twenty one and got out. Sherman believes White's arrest on February nineteenth, twenty twenty three, shouldn't have been kept quiet. There's a reason the public has a right to know these things. It's so that we can educate, inform, and reform problems that are going on four days later on february 23rd there's the assaulted straubs body slamming a 70 year old grandmother it's a story that sounds unbelievable news 4 investigates exposed what happened she was walking into the store when she noticed a man at her car she called 911 and as she did that he rushed her now we obtain the surveillance video giving a bird's eye view of the shocking attack i know my sister don't want to watch it She's not able right now. Sheila's sister is seen running into the store, followed by White. He appears uncontrollable, taking swings at multiple employees. Look at how gliders just be scared. They know they can't do nothing. They're like, we can't touch this guy. If we touch this guy, we're going to get in trouble. Because you know she ran there screaming. Her face all bloody. He's trying to kill me. He's trying to kill me. And all the gliders is like... Hey, and do I don't blame them. I don't blame. Hit one if you yeah. don't blame. Huh, I'm, I'm muted. Hit, hit one if you don't blame these gliders for not helping that 70-year-old woman. Hit two if you think they should have helped. I don't blame these gliders. And I will tell you, if you're a glider out there now and a 70-year-old black woman comes in, her face all bloody and some goddamn ape is following her, trying to 
get her again, kick her ass some more. It sounds fucked up. And I wouldn't want this to happen to any women in my family. But just talking to gliders, like leveling with gliders, not even white people, um, leveling with you fucking white people, you gliders. I would not help her. I would just call 911 and hope that she's alive when the cops get there. Because this is a a knife. I mean, I don't want to risk my life over somebody I don't know. I mean, if it's my own family, yeah, I, I would risk my life. But no, but, have a knife. but I'm not even talking about him having a knife. I'm talking about if you hurt him. If right. something happens, he's 59. Yeah. You you holding him, a bunch of y'all holding him down. And he's coked up. He <laughs> could die. Fuck, not even his airway being blocked. Just he could die from like, just like exertion. And being coked up. And being coked up. And y'all are going. You think, oh, well, this, they, they, they certainly black people wouldn't. She tries. Yeah, yeah. Tries. Nah, we just like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, this one, I wouldn't, they wouldn't dare stop that being on stuff. That's like that. heroic. That's heroic. Tries. Tries. You would you would think that <laughs> you would think that we would consider the old seventy year old woman who got her ass whooped. No, we would think about the sixty nine year old, twenty one year stint doing. So the so the um the group victimization or perceived victimization hood is much yes. more appealing than just the sixty that seventy year old woman being victimized. Well, no, it's the well, no, it's the that- race, yeah. No one gives a shit about her because the violence in the community is so rampant that she's it, it's it's the difference between splattering some paint on a white canvas or splattering some paint on some fucking painters like fucking um the the little, yeah, <laughs> the piece, yeah. <laughs> it's like you do you see this we don't we don't view this the same way normal people view it because people get killed all the time if you saw this show yesterday you saw it like it's just a constant murder and violence in these places so um, to see a white person do it is the exception yeah when it's a white person, the exception and it gives you a chance to be mad about it right because it so never you, happens you it's get, um it's it's like um it's a release, you know release some, valve. It's a release valve. It's right, release but you know how valve. some some people do the uh, stolen valor. It's called stolen valor. They'll they'll put on a fake army oh, uniform, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they'll it's get all this respect. Yeah. I, I came up with a term called stolen victimhood. So they'll find some sun man that's perceived to be a victim of some glider, and then all of the sons are like, "Look what happened to us." Yep. This happened to us. Yep. And then every glider goes and apologizes to every sun man and say, I'm sorry for what happened to you, even though they had nothing to do with it. It's stolen victimhood or and per- stolen though, perceived victimhood. Even though 10 gliders were murdered that day by sun people. And, and not, gliders and, and, and four four tigers and three and umbrellos. Not like yeah. accidentally and not like choked choked you while they were subduing you. I'm talking about murdered you. Sprayed up the block. Yeah. Spun it, came back, shot 15 warning shots. Yeah, killed your ass. Killed you and your sister and shit. Some, like, just like the government memorial game. That's why I do the government memorial game because the amount of gliders we kill every day it's like almost literally, if you go to government war, 99% of the black people were killed by black people, and 50% of the white people were killed by black people. Jocking attack. I know my sister don't want to watch it. She's not able right now. Sheila's sister is seen running into the store, followed by white. 
He appears uncontrollable, taking swings at multiple employees and causing quite the scene before he rushes back outside. She's scared to go out. She's scared to go to the store. She's scared to go to her car. Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner's office first charged White with fourth degree assault, a misdemeanor. Dang. A few weeks later, a grand jury. <laughs> Yo, fourth? I've never even heard of fourth degree assault. God, duh. And you know she had to see the video because the video is part of the yeah, evidence. The evidence, yeah. She, but she, remember, she's out. She, 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 um, she's gonna be a nurse. I think. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Uh, so she, I think, I don't know if she's out yet, but I think her last day is June or something, sometime in June. But yeah, this is. She saw that, and said, "Misdemeanor." <laughs> and if he was white. She would have charged with attempted murder. She would have charged. She, she's the one. Remember the the couple, the white couple where BLM kicked their gate down in that neighborhood and stormed their property, and they came out with their guns pointed at the ground. The McCluskeys. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. McCluskeys. This was at the yeah, yeah. She she charged them with some outlandish shit and tried to you know get them like 20 they were facing like 20 years for holding their guns down at the ground and telling blm protesters to get off their property damn so if this was a white guy that had done this she would have charged him with attempted murder right yeah, what an impressive system and bump yeah the charges up to first degree assault which is a felony it's a shame because you would think that um you would be protected by the people that you elected, and you're not. Sheila claims her sister has been kept in the dark. Prosecutors never told her about White's DWI and assault arrest just days before. Kim Gardner Dang. allowed this to happen. She allowed this to happen, so I, I blame her. Left wondering about the what if. That case was handled differently. He should have been in jail. This wouldn't have never happened to my sister. Currently, White is being held without bond. We do want to stress he has only been charged in the Straub's assault. His DWI arrest from days before is still pending review from prosecutors. We asked prosecutors about that. They sent us a statement saying if the police bring over a case and flag it as a public safety issue, it is reviewed expeditiously. We're going to continue reaching out to the circuit attorney's office to understand what happened. Do you think that woman is gonna uh, vote differently now, or do you think no, gonna... no way, no, no way, not no, at all. There's everything's no, still racist. No possible chance. It, it zero chance she's gonna change anything other than her outrage about what specifically affected her and her family. And on that note, I'm out of here, man. Peace out. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace.